Hi everybody. Happy Memorial Day. In this video we're going to start by apparently I'm finishing up the right side spark plug leads on the top. If I look to the left I see that the top left ones are done so yeah I must have already done those and now you're getting to see the right. We hadn't put the holders in. Um, we, we have some, some uh, wire guides for the back of the baffles. You'll see me put those in later. We had to use special ones because, well, you'll see why. All right, so now that the O2 sensor is plugged in, in this video, the main focus is we are taking the panel off and we are putting in a switch for the O2 sensor so that we can fire it up and test it out. Once again, I would like to thank my director of photography for pointing the camera directly into the into a backlit field. Thank you, dumb shit. So I've had to, uh, you know, I'm just going to crank this video a little bit here. Here's a little bit of adjustment. All right, so the idea is that we've got the O2 sensor in place and we're putting a breaker switch in so we can turn on the heater whenever we need to. Now this is a highly contested topic which is, well, I should say it's highly contested amongst the electronic injection crowd. Because, you know, what percentage of experimental planes have electronic injection and, and ignition? But the idea is that, you know, lead kills. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it. Lead kills your O2 sensors. Well, I say kills, it, it, it fouls them up, it plugs them. So the debate is, do you have the heater on and have the O2 sensor up and working before you turn the engine on or do you wait until after the engine has started up to turn it on All right the idea being that a preheated element will have less likelihood of lead sticking to it but in the same manner a hot element might be sticky so is having a cold heater or a cold sensor uh, at the beginning of the engine start up better so that it might not stick to it right it's no one really knows I would you know scientific uh, ex uh, exper experiments into lead fouling of O2 sensors so basically it's do whatever you think is right now again I'll, I'll point back to the instructions by the the systems manufacturer that the O2 sensor be placed uh, high up near the flame front as the hot exhaust will have less chance of lead sticking to the sensor uh, as opposed to much farther down the exhaust where the exhaust is cooled. And that the colder lead salts down there will have a better chance of sticking. And it's a very good question. Of course it also really sucks because two things. One, uh, this sen uh, the system can now handle three O2 sensors, which has made me think, uh, because I would really love to have stuck an O2 sensor past the point where the two exhausts come together, right? So instead of just getting the combustion out of the number two cylinder, right, we're getting it out of the combination of number two and number four. Alternately, I could also put one on the right side and get the one out of number one and number three. But again, that's for fine tuning only, right? This thing already is 3D mapped, has the has its fuel map done. The O2 sensor is there just to do fine tuning. So we'll see. I mean, that's an, the nice part is my buddy Larry's right around the corner, and he can weld more bungs on to my exhaust than I could ever need. So if the if it works out, if it doesn't work out, we can experiment. All right, so now the switch is in place, everything is happy, and we've got the O2 sensor on. The idea here is that we will see the number two EGT rise, and we do. Here's a picture of the display. You can see the 30 degree rise there. So now that uh, that's good, we're happy with that, so there goes the O2 sensor. Uh, next is we are placing now that we know where all the exhaust and everything is, I'd gone and drained all the rest of the preservative oil out, and we are putting our quick drain plug in right here. Now, unfortunately, I can only find this one. I think this one uses 
um, 5 16 interior vinyl tube. We have all of these on our club planes, and they're great, but the one we have on a couple of them are like thick, are uh, a bigger diameter, and I wish I could have found those. But anyway, it is what it is. And now it's safety wired in place and all is well. Okay, in the next video, we're actually going to put uh, some numbers on the side of the plane. Very exciting. Thank you for joining me, everyone. See you soon.